inaugural season, earning the number one national ranking for five straight weeks and winning a NorCal championship. But the Oakland Soul stand in their way of a Western Conference crown as the two meet in the semifinals today. It's the Glens and the Soul coming up next on the Bay Area Online Sports Network as we welcome you into Chile Skyline College. Ben Ross alongside Kylan Mills for this Western Conference semifinal matchup. And Kylan, these are two of the top teams in the entire USLW League. You talk about the Glens at 10-1-1 and in the regular season, the Soul at 10-2. and Each team one against the other on their home field. And this should be a terrific matchup today for a chance to move on to Sunday's Western Conference Final. Really looking forward to this one, Ben. A rematch from just five days ago. The Oakland Soul got the best of the Glens on Sunday, three to one, the final score in Oakland. The Glens have something to prove coming into this one with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. A key for the Glens is going to be trying to possess, build out the back, and then being really smart in terms of transition defense. That's where the Oakland Soul were able to get the best of the Glens in a couple situations. And the Glens in general are a team that wants to possess. They been so dominant against opponents to where they do have the ball so much they can be susceptible in transition moments to counterattacks. The Glens are a team that really wants to keep the ball but also has to be careful about transition defense. The Soul is a team that has a lot of technical ability. They also have speed on the outside, speed and physicality up top so they will punish you if you make any defensive mistakes which is how one of the goals was produced on Sunday. Also though they will punish you in terms of those transition opportunities where they can make the most of them. And you can probably hear it coming through. The wind is at an all-time high today. We talk about it every match, it feels like, Kylan, but today it's about as windy as it has ever been, and that's going to be a major factor. We'll see which team goes into the wind in the first half and which team has it at their back then in the second half. I know that Again, we've talked about that as something that can be important, but I think it'll really be a factor in today's game. The wind is a huge factor when playing here at Skyline College because it changes the game. If you're playing into the wind, you've got to run into that and, and play against the pressure. And then also trying to play balls out of the air. It's very difficult to clear it out of your defensive third when you're trying to play it up into the wind. So that can create some opportunities for the opponents. However, when the wind is at your back, you get a little bit of that extra speed. But you also have to be really careful because balls can easily run over the end line. So there's a little bit of a catch-22. But in general, you want to take advantage of that momentum you have when you have the wind at your backs. Well, we'll go ahead and step aside while they play the national anthem. We'll be back with the starting lineups and opening kickoff. It's the Glens and the Soul on the Bay Area Online Sports Network. Here's a look at the playoff bracket in the USLW League. 16 teams making the postseason. You see in the upper left, that's where the Glens and the Soul are. The winner of this match today will move on to Sunday's Western Conference Final against the winner of the California Storm and Olytown FC. They're playing tonight at 7 o'clock. 
And again, the next match for the winner today will be Sunday at 12.30. Both of these teams hoping to move on to that one. One thing to note about that playoff bracket is this is the first season that there has been a Northern California division in USLW League play. This is the inaugural season for both the Oakland Soul and San Francisco Glens. For them to have made such an impression on the national stage just speaks to the level of talent across Northern California in both men's and women's soccer. Also just to the level of talent across the state and the ability of both these clubs to really make impacts in their community. That's something that has stood out to me throughout my time covering the San Francisco Glens, the Oakland Soul, also an organization that is really focused on being involved and making an impact and it certainly has been felt awesome to see both these teams giving players young players players in college and even post-college the opportunity to continue playing and hopefully get noticed many of these players do have goals to play in the professional leagues uh, moving forward so just awesome to see the opportunity for both these players and the impact both of these teams have made on a national stage as well as in the local community yeah no question about it i mean the combined record of these two teams this year 20 wins just three losses and one time and you talk about the glens they were ranked number one in the entire national power rankings for five straight weeks earlier this season and again we've talked about the soul nearly just as good let's take a look at the starting lineups real quickly we'll start with the home san francisco glens and it's bianca dominguez getting the start in goal you see some of the key players back in the lineup ellie piper obviously a big one jenny imithan as well mia buddha has been terrific peyton marciz nadia gomes boy she has been one to watch this year with her 12 goals tied for fourth most in the conference kylan i know you're excited about seeing her again gomes is one of been one of the most electric players in USLW League play across the country. She's able to finish with both feet. She's super dynamic with the ball, has explosive speed where she can just blow by defenders. She does well when she's out in space. She's a player you always have to be aware of in terms of defending. And then real quickly, let's give you the Oakland Soul starters and Layla Armas going to be very important in goal. She's one of the best in the country. Manaka Hayashi is not in the starting lineup, but she'll be one to watch for sure with three goals last game on Sunday in the win for the Soul over the San Francisco Glens. And we are just about set for the OT kickoff. And we're underway. The Glens in their home greens and the Soul in the white kits. And interestingly enough, the Glens will have the wind at their back here in the first half. So we'll see if they can take advantage and perhaps score a goal or two in this first 45. You mentioned Hayashi. She's certainly a player to watch. And in that game on Sunday, she did come off the bench against the Glens and was still able to score a hat trick. One of them was a super impressive banger from outside the 18. She's a player who can strike from distance, has also a lot of pace in the attack, and certainly one to watch with the potential to be a super sub in this one. We'll see how the early going goes these first few minutes. As we talked about in the open, the soul getting a win over the Glens just five days ago on Sunday. That game was in Oakland, a 3-1 victory. But again, the Glens have added some key pieces back to their lineup today. And let's see how they use this win. In the first half, there's a long ball. Jesse Halliday giving chase down the left side. She's not going to quite get there. And it will roll across for a goal kick. That long ball coming off the foot of Elise Evans, one of the leaders of this back line, the Stanford player who is an all-region first-team selection, the Pac-12 freshman of the year for 2022. She is really comfortable with the ball at her feet, typically very accurate with those long diagonal balls forward as well. She has a ton of speed in the back line, a smart defender, good decision-making, so she's one that's going to be really tough to beat for the Oakland Soul. See how aggressive the Glens want to press here in this first half as the Soul tried to move it up the field. Samantha Tran couldn't get it by, and it's cleared back to midfield by the Glens, and now they're looking to attack. Halliday on left side. That's Gomes, 12 goals this year, tied for fourth most in the W League. Tried to cross it into the box. Comes back for a shot from just outside the box. That was the newcomer, Karina Laguerre. And the 
the save made by Layla Armas. Keep an eye on Laguerre in the midfield for the Glen. She's a player who is a, a lot of really technical skill, plays at Duke, also has played for the United States under 20 team. In fact, was a World Cup starter when they competed back in 2022. She was ranked as the fourth overall prospect in the class of 2022 by topdrawersoccer.com. So a player who's among the best in her age group across the country, a really technically sound player who will punish you and is going to be looking to really jumpstart this Glen's attack and getting creative in the attack third you can see the Glens are trying to press well up the field here using the wind in this first half and a steal we're into the fourth minute no score the first half of this Western Conference semifinal between the Oakland Soul and the San Francisco Glens and that'll be a goal kick for the Soul for the season, Oakland with 37 goals in their 12 games, only allowing 13. Both of these teams have massive goal differentials. For the Glens, it was 44 to 12. And Great pressure. Dangerous play here and a turnover. Laguer for Gomes, left foot deflected, and it's in! And just like that, the Glens are on the board. This all started from great pressure from the Glens up top. That's going to be key for them throughout this game, the high line and the high pressure. The Glens do not want to allow the Oakland Souls to work the ball out of their defensive third easily. They put this back line under. They force them to make a mistake, turn the ball over in a dangerous area, and then the Glens capitalize and punish for that mistake, getting on the board here early. A huge lead for San Francisco. And for Nadia Gomes, picking up right where she left off in the regular season, we told you she had 12 goals in the 12 regular season matches. That was tied for fourth most in the league. She gets credit for the goal here in the fourth minute. And the Glens with the early lead. But Kylan, it's interesting at this field in particular, I don't think the, the Glens are gonna be satisfied with just one. They wanna put up as many as they can in the first half. We saw them in the last Cron on broadcast, we had fall behind 3-0, come back with four straight goals in the second half with the wind. It ended up a 4-4 tie, but it can really make a difference. It can make a huge difference, and head coach Mike Shirabi told us that oftentimes when the Glens do win the coin flip or get the choice, they will take the wind in their backs in the first half and then look to bury as many goals as possible when they do have that slight edge and advantage. So this is a team that's going to want to put a couple more in the back of the net while they have the wind in their backs in this first half because they know it's going to be tough sledding in the second half when they're playing into the wind. Here's Halliday at midfield. Another thing in terms of strategy when playing in tough windy conditions is trying to keep the ball on the ground. Giving chase is Maya Beltran. Not going to quite get there as it rolls to Armas. Well, I wanted to mention also Nadia Gomes made the USLW League Team of the Month. And there was a great feature in her on her uh, in the San Francisco Chronicle this week. Marissa and Jemmy, who does a great job for the Chronicle, writing both about this matchup and about Nadia Gomes and her backstory. If you don't know, she has played in the NWSL for the Orlando Pride, was a, stepped away from soccer for, or at least competitive soccer for about five years before joining the Glens this year at the age of 26. And she has really lived up to the billing. She has been so fun to watch. Gomes not only has played in the NWSL, also has represented Portugal, has played at a super high international level. She was selected 18th overall by Orlando back in the 2018 NWSL draft. Unfortunately, the NWSL didn't quite pan out for her yet, but she is still pursuing that dream of making it to the next level, and she appears to have the skill based on the way she's had a major impact in the W League this season. Been awesome to watch her, and if you are from around the area and follow West Coast Conference soccer, she played for BYU back from 2014 to 2017. Gomes was the West Coast Conference Player of the Year, also an All-America third team selection as well. Yeah, that BYU program has been so good, along with Santa Clara, obviously. And to be the WCC Player of the Year, as you mentioned, which Gomes was, is very impressive. So this will be a free kick now, taken by Jocelyn Travers. The Glens, with the early one-goal lead, we're in the eighth minute. 
Goal scored by Nadia Gomes back in the fourth minute. This is Gomes again on the far side. Back for Ellie Piper. And now the Glens will organize. So one thing when dealing with super windy conditions, it's going to be a lot tougher to play direct balls and bowls in the air forward. That's why it's so important to really leap heavily into playing the ball on the ground and possessing. If the wind's at your back, if you play it in the air, it can easily run long. And if you're playing into the wind, it can easily come right back at you with that wind going against you. Some nice dribbling from Halliday. Cross is low in the box. A shot is blocked. Another chance for Laguerre, and she scores! Karina Laguerre makes it 2-0. I said just a couple moments ago, keep an eye on Karina Laguerre because she is a super skilled player, technically sound, and she just knows the right place to be at the right time, is lingering in the box exactly where she needs to be, doesn't get the first shot to go, but is right there to collect the rebound and then puts that away with beautiful composure. Low and away, play swell, just a really great piece of skill from Karina Laguerre playing at the 10 for the Glens. What an addition for the Glens. The Cooper City, Florida native plays for Duke and the USA U-20 World Cup team. And a dream start for the Glens with two goals in the first nine minutes. Let's see if the roots have, a, or the soul rather, have a response. But Gear also with an assist on the first goal. So she already has two points here, a goal and an assist in the first 10 minutes of this match. How about that? Karina Laguerre coming in and making her presence felt for this Glens team. Like I said, keep an eye on her playing at the 10 for the Glens up at the farthest up the field position in terms of their midfield field triangle. That's what the 10 is. And she's a player that looks to facilitate the attack, but that, as we can see, can also do some damage when she gets in and around the 18. Glens looking for more. They know as well as anyone that Going into the wind in the second half will be a challenge, and as many goals as you can put home in the first half will be crucial. Giveaway at midfield. Faith Marciz takes it for San Francisco. Player who just won the ball there was Ellie Piper, one of my favorite players to watch on this Glens team. Piper plays at the outside back position. She's super gritty. She's strong on the ball. She plays physical, especially for her size, but then she also can get involved in the attack. Piper's a player who can swing balls into the box and really be aggressive also with the ball at her feet. So keep an eye on her at the outside back position. Good possession here from the Glens. Looking for more, already up two. A shot from outside the box and a nice save. Punching it away, Layla Armas. But a good effort from Mia Buda. And that's going to be a corner. Mia Buda, another super accomplished player on this Glens roster, became the first Indian American soccer player to represent the U.S. at any level in a World Cup when she competed in the U-17 World Cup just recently. She's 16 years old, already committed to play at Stanford, uh, was the United Soccer Coaches Youth Girls Soccer Player of the Year. You saw the damage she can do from outside the 18. She's also a skillful player in the midfield, really comfortable with the ball at her feet, works well in tight spaces, and certainly a player who can make an impact on this game. So the first corner kick of the afternoon. High into the wind. Dangerous. Back post now for Gomes. And it rolls off her foot. That'll be another corner. She wants to play it quickly. And let's see who comes away with the loose ball. Well defended by the soul. Lens will have to be careful getting back defensively. The one thing, maybe the one advantage of going into the wind can be the counterattack. You can send a long ball down and sometimes the wind will stop it up and allow you to get there. We'll see if the soul can take advantage. But again, the Glens playing their home games here all season are well aware. Those last two corner kicks for the Glens could have been executed a little bit better. That first corner that was sent in super high, just that ball lofted way too high. It's going to be impossible for any of your teammates to read it, especially with the wind possibly changing directions mid-flight. And then also when it is higher in the air, it gives the defense 
more time to get underneath the ball and try to clear it away to get good body position. Also, a driven ball is going to be easier for a teammate to redirect. You don't have to put as much power on it to put it in the back of the net. So that one just a little bit too lofted. And then the second ball is interesting. They went with a short corner. Typically, you want to try to catch the defense off guard, but because they just had a corner, the soul were already in ready position, already had numbers inside the box, so it didn't quite work there. Another shot handled by Armas. So let's see how Layla Armas responds to giving up two early ones. She's one of the top goalkeepers in the W League. Just 18 years old, a UCLA commit. Giving up only one goal in each of her last three coming into today. And again, these are two high-powered offenses. The Glens scoring 44 goals in their 12 regular season games. The Soul put home 37, both averaging better than three goals per game for the year. We're now in the 14th minute. 2-0. The Glens with goals in the fourth minute and in the ninth. The Western Conference semifinals. These are the top two teams from the NorCal division. The Glens winning it by one point. They finished with 31 points. The Soul finished with 30. Elite ball movement from the Glens so far. Yeah, they've been on the money with their passing. And that one is poked away. It'll be a throw in. You pointed out Layla Armas going to play at UCLA in the fall. The defending national champions, coached by Marguerite Oasaza, who previously was an assistant coach at Stanford. But Armas is a great shot stopper, not a goalkeeper who's going to be easy to get by. There's a dangerous ball punched out by Armas. Still loose. Another shot and a great save by Armas. That was ticketed for the top of the net, and she got a hand on it. Right on cue, as I was mentioning, Armas being a great shot stopper, a great dive, good anticipation on the save, did the right thing in terms of just touching that one over the crossbar. Well executed by the sole goalkeeper. Maya Beltran with the shot for the Glens. This will be their third corner kick. And it has been all Glens here in this first half with the benefit of the wind at their backs. Low ball played out. Manaka Hayashi. And that'll be a throw in for San Francisco. Good pressure there by the Glens. So far, Oakland just hasn't been able to possess the ball. They've really struggled to maintain possession to get any type of comfortable ball movement going because the Glens are going so high pressure. They're holding their line high. They're not letting them work the ball out of their defensive third in any circumstances. And then the Glens, when they get the ball, are moving it well and forcing Oakland to really shift and get them out of shape. So the Glens, thus far, have really controlled the tempo of this game. Play back for Dominguez. Hasn't seen a ton of action yet. In this one, the Duke commit from Hercules, California. Very good with her feet. And so they have no problem playing it back to her. Glens definitely seem on the on the money with their passing. Very much under control. Until the broadcaster's jinx just kicked in. <laughs> right. But still, this first 15, 16 minutes has been really solid. They've come out pinpoint. They, they look poised. They've been under control, and that's a big reason why they have the two-goal lead. There's another example. Oakland unable to work the ball out of their defensive third. When they do get in possession, they have it amongst their back line. They're just not able to connect right now with their midfielders or to play that positive ball forward. The Glens are just really putting them under, doing a good job of blocking up passing lanes and then holding their line high and just pressuring the individual with the ball. This is Buda trying to get some space. Deflected off her foot, but still... Handled by the Glens, Piper with a touch. And now cleared away by the Soul. A collision, and that'll be a foul. Honestly, the Glens. it was still a good step by Jenny Imithan. She is a player who is rock solid in the back line, has played at the six, also at the center back position, and she is just a gritty and tough defender. She is not going to go down easily in any 50-50 situation. Dominguez plays it back out. See if the soul can get a possession here. And now the Glens looking to go in transition. They've got some numbers. Gomes 
couldn't get through. Well defended by Oakland. Oakland did a good job there of getting numbers behind the ball and getting compact in the middle of the field, not allowing Gomes to just break through easily. Good battle there. Jesse Halliday comes away with it for San Francisco. Beltron trying to get it to Laguerre, and it's going to go the other way. Well, it's fascinating. We talk about the newcomer, Karina Laguerre, already a goal and an assist today, but, you know, all season long in the W League, Kyla, these teams are dealing with players coming and going. There's a lot of turnover in the rosters, and the Glens have handled that very well. Certainly, it's also that time of year where you're going to start seeing players. As the shot goes wide. You're going to start seeing players who have to go off to college as well because up in July, many colleges ask their players to start returning. Preseasons begin, so moving forward in the playoffs, it's going to continue to be an issue for all of these teams in the W League, just depending on when these players have to report. The Mets have certainly handled it well. Lots of changes in the roster from week to week. The Soul dealing with much of the same, but they do have a little bit of an older roster. They have a couple more players in the Glens in their lineup that are post-college to where they do have a little bit more regularness. Samantha Train goes down, and it will go through to Dominguez. It was one of the better looks for the soul here in this first half. Well, Samantha Tran, definitely one to watch for the soul number seven in the white. Won two national championships at Stanford. Conference semifinal. And they'll play it back for Armas. Well, Condor Soccer again, the new streets of San Francisco 2023 USL League 2 collection exclusively at SF Glens home games. Aside from today, if the Glens win, we'll be back here Sunday at 12:30. So there might be another chance for you if you're not in the house today. Great work on that last possession by the Soul to get numbers behind the ball and then good work by the midfield just to win that challenge, get the ball back. Now can they advance it positively up the field? That's the next step for them to try to break down this Glens team. And the winner of this one will advance to the Western Conference Final, 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. And they'll take on the winner of Holy Town FC and the California Storm. Those two playing tonight at 7. So you all know the result of that one during this broadcast. Good hustle by Jenny Emethen, kept it in play. But now here comes Oakland with a chance. Brandon Nilt. Good defense. And it's cleared back to midfield. That's just a great piece of 1v1 defending by Jenny Emethen. As I mentioned, she's a player who's super hard to get by because she steps and challenges hard. She's physical, but she's also smart in terms of timing her tackles. It was a really well-timed tackle, good body position by Emethen. She's a player who's really hard to get by 1v1. And that was a good player in Miranda Nil she was going against. Played for Thailand in the Women's World Cup. Former Cal Bear. Six goals, four assists this year is a shot from Gomes into the chest of Armas. Nadia Gomes is so dangerous, especially with that left foot. We've seen it countless times this year. One of Gomes' biggest strengths is that left foot. And it's interesting because the Glens have been playing her out on the right side, so expect to see her when she gets the ball. Look to cut inside. If you're the sole defense, you've got to try to prevent her from doing that because she's going to want to put it on her strong left foot. Buddha. Ambitious shot. Sometimes, though, when you have the wind, it's worth giving it a chance. Sometimes those will go. Certainly, you don't mind taking a chance from that position. The Glens would love to add one on here in the first half. She had the opening for sure. She had the space and time to pick her head up. Nadia Gomes scoring in the fourth minute for the Glens. And then the newcomer, Karina Laguer, adding one in the ninth minute. We're now into the 23rd minute. Ends with the two goal lead. Seoul has settled into this match a little bit over the last five, ten minutes. Now we'll see if they can get some sustained offensive pressure. It's 
never easy going into this stiff of a breeze. And here's Buddha for the Glens. Dishes off for Halliday. Jocelyn Trappers back for Halliday. Soul in their defensive formation. Lens are willing to be patient. And now a turnover. That was good defensive stand there for Oakland. They did a good job of just getting numbers behind the ball and forcing the Glens into one side of the field where they were playing in just a really small pocket. For the Glens, there's got to be more movement off the ball. They were playing it just among a little triangle here on this near side of the pitch, and there wasn't a ton of movement in terms of players getting into dangerous spaces or getting into pockets between the defense where they could try to advance the ball either across the field horizontally or up the field to get into a corner. Jaden Ivey. Samantha Tran goes down. The foul be called on her. So a free kick for the Glens. So the Glens have to be super careful. That was a good transition moment for the Glens. When they did turn the ball over here on this near side, they were able to get numbers behind and prevent Oakland from counter from a counterattack. And that's going to be super important moving forward in this game is Oakland is playing that strong defensive shape and playing compact when they do win the ball. They're going to look to get forward quickly and look to get numbers forward quickly, especially when the Glens give it up in the middle of the field like that rather than farther up the pitch. They're going to want to get the ball and advance it quickly The Solar. Sol, a little more aggressive here. The Glens able to maintain possession. San Francisco is so sturdy on that back line. You mentioned Elise Evans earlier. You talked about Jenny Imithan, just so many calming presences. They whip the ball around well. Halliday tried to turn with it, but rolled away. That's good pressure by the Oakland Soul, and they did a good job of shifting from side to side to prevent the glance as they did switch fields, and they want to create an opening here on this near side when you switch it to try to advance the ball forward. Oakland did a good job of shifting as a unit. That ball somehow gets through. And now Tran, guarded by four Glens, keeps it going. Pass just out of the reach, and it rolls through to Dominguez. Nice idea. Good idea for the Soul. They did a good job of getting the ball forward. They've been doing a better job of applying pressure and forcing the Glens to turn the ball over here in the last couple of minutes. That's going to be important for Oakland to be successful moving forward. They allowed the Glens to really dominate possession early in this game, but now they're starting to look a little bit more uncomfortable with the ball. Oakland's doing a better job of keeping their shape, deciding and finding those moments where they do want to press high and put the Glens under, and then finding those moments where they want to drop off, play compact, and allow them to play forward quickly. Long ball from Elise Evans. And into the arms of Layla Armas. 26th minute. Honestly, not a bad idea. I don't mind the Glens switching it up when they do possess on the ground so much and looking for those moments where they also can counterattack or skip lines and play that direct ball forward because they do have quite a bit of speed up top. The Glens have players who you want in those 1v1 situations running onto a ball with a defender at their hip because a lot of times they're going to come out on top in a foot race. Same thing with the Oakland Solo. They have a lot of speed up top. That ball played into the wind. And Evans sends it forward for San Francisco. Halliday, guarded by Shineman. Here. She has goal and assist here in the first half. Gomes with the other goal for the Glens. That one played back behind the defense, but a good recovery, and the soul will clear it out of harm's way. Glens so aggressive defensively, really not much time for the soul to make their next pass. 
good recovery run there by Jocelyn Travers coming back after she was trying to anticipate and get forward. The ball ended up bouncing to the sole and they touched it the other direction. She was able to get back and collect it. A good effort there for the USA U16 national team player who has competed with the national team at various youth levels and also was rated a four-star recruit by Team for Soccer. So one of the biggest up-and-comers here in the Bay Area in terms of the soccer scene. Gear, nice ball forward. Travers on the left side, trying to get through Shinneman. And it rolls across. That'll be a goal kick. Pretty good defense there from Shinneman. Yeah, good move. 1v1 defense there. Uh, some good ball movement from the Glens as well. Trying to get that ball forward. Thought that might have rolled out for a corner. Ended up just not quite getting that last deflection. Seven steps up and sends the Glens on offense. Seoul starting to find their footing defensively after the two early goals from San Francisco. Good defensive work ran in that last possession by the Oakland Seoul and Sarah Murr, who ran back from the midfield and ended up intercepting that ball that led to the turnover. They're going to have to stay super active, this whole midfield are, because the Glens have so many players that want to get forward. You've got to always be tracking back. Twenty-ninth now. minute now, and this is going to be a big final 16 minutes of this half. The Glens would love to add another goal while they've still got the wind. You know it's going to be a totally different story in the second half. That was a good defensive stand for the Glens midfield. Mia Buda did a good job of just anticipating quickly shifting as the Soul looked to switch that ball across the midfield. She stepped at just the right time, forced the ball back, and that led to a turnover. Look at Gomes. Shot out of a cannon, but couldn't quite get there. That will be a corner kick. So it was touched by a Soul player, and this is the fourth corner kick of the half. None have been really dangerous so far for the Glens. And that one kind of got caught up in that wind and it will be a goal kick. Too lofted, too high again on that corner for the Glens. They got to send it driven a little bit lower to the ground, especially in this wind. You just saw the ball goes higher in the air. There's more opportunity for it to carry and that one carried just straight over the end line since they're playing with the winds at their back. Low, drive it, don't give the wind time to pick it up and put enough force on it that it goes where you want it to go and put it in a position where a teammate can run on and just redirect into goal. It's a better possession here from the Soul. That's the next step. They've been doing a better job of applying pressure to the Glens, not allowing them to break them down easily. Now they've got to try to get meaningful possession to work the ball up the field to create a goal scoring chance. Well, Align Sports and Performance Psychology is a private group practice partnering with the San Francisco Glens. We provide specialized and expert therapeutic and mental skills treatment to meet athletes' unique needs and help you reach your goals across California. Find out more at AlignBayArea.com. Which way is this going? The throw in for San Francisco. It was indicated to throw for San Francisco despite some protests from Oakland or possibly their fans. <laughs> Collision there, and that will be a foul against the Soul. Been a pretty clean match so far through these first 31 minutes. No cards either side. Two goals, both belonging to the Glens. Nadia Gomes in the fourth minute. The 13th of the year, including the 12 in the regular season. And then in the ninth minute, Karina Laguerre making it two. Keep in mind, a two-goal lead is not a comfortable lead against this Oakland Soul team that's loaded with a ton of talent. Last time these two teams played on Sunday, the Glens actually had a 1-0 lead early after a put away by Nadia Gomes in the 20th minute, and then Oakland came storming back and buried three, so certainly not a comfortable position or a comfortable lead yet for the Glens. Both of these, team both of these teams in the regular season average better than three goals per match. So they can certainly light up the scoreboard. And you know the soul will 
will have something to say in the second half with the winds at their back. And one two touch passing here on the near side by the Oakland Soul. Good job working in a tight space with multiple defenders around. They're able to get it back and comfortably work it back to their defenders. Peace and patience and skill there. Good job by Buddha shielding off the defender from behind. And she'll draw a foul. She's that box-to-box -box midfielder you, you want to play in that six or eight position. She does the work defensively. She's good at shifting and anticipating where the ball is going to go, stepping at the right time. So that when she gets the ball to her feet, she also can be super dynamic. You just saw that change of pace when she had the ball and started to work it forward. When she does dribble forward with confidence, she can be a scary prospect to try to stop as well. Let's see what she does here on this free kick. Puts it on goal, and it's handled by Armas. That's tough distance to strike on goal from over 30 yards out. That's going to give the keeper plenty of time to anticipate where it's going. You really have to bang it from that distance. That one was just lofted, chipped up a little bit too high. So Armas has made a handful of saves here in this first half. The UCLA commit goal for the Oakland Soul. And now Oakland looking to find their first shot. Oakland had numbers in that situation. They good recover. job to win it back. Samantha Tran, but again, more good defense. Jenny Imathen takes it away for the Glens. Still, it's a good transition stand there by the Soul. They stuck with it and were able to win it back the second time and now force the turnover as the Glens sent it out of bounds. But some good pressure. They've just got to look to play that final ball. It was good ball movement up the field, but then looking to make that entry pass into the attacker was the one that was off that Elise Evans was able to step on. It's just a matter of execution on that pass. Laguerre for Halliday. Nice move around her defender. Looking for some help. Shinneman couldn't knock it away. Gomes, her pass was blocked back to her. And now Buda will regroup. Jesse Halliday is a Los Gatos native who I feel like quietly impacts games. She's not necessarily a player that's always leading on the stat sheet. You see Nadia Gomes putting in so many and a couple other players as well. But she has a ton of skill. You just saw that movement with the ball at her feet. Just elite. And she also just makes smart decisions. Good passing. She's dangerous on the cross. Nice give and go. Marciz, her shot blocked. Well, you're right to your point about Jesse Halliday. She's often right in the middle of the action, has the ball on her foot. Often, the Cal Poly midfielder playing forward here for the Glens today. She's been effective on that left side. I believe Halliday transferred to Loyola Marymount, or she transferred out to Cal Poly, started at Loyola Marymount, uh, but she's a player who previously competed with FC Bay Area Surf, which is something we haven't mentioned yet. A number of these Glens players competed at the club level for Bay Area Surf, which makes a huge difference in terms of team chemistry. It's something that Coach Robbie has talked a lot about, is that this team had a natural connection because several of these players grew up competing together, grew up playing together, in travel and, and in ECNL ball, and that's made a huge difference in the connection they're able to have when the roster has been changing. There still is a certain level of comfortability and familiarness, familiarity, I should say, amongst this group. Yeah, it's a great point, and that Bay Area surf team has been so good, such a terrific program. Yeah, Jesse Halliday was a part of two national championship teams with FC Bay Area Surf, one of the most dominant clubs, not only in Northern California, but in the country. So a lot of these high-level players who earned scholarships to big Division I schools that you're seeing here today was because they played for that high-level team for club ball. Good play by Shinneman. Wouldn't let it get past her to Halliday. So after the first two goals in the first nine minutes, for the Glens, the Soul have really clamped down better defensively. And we're now coming up on the 38th minute. Halliday 
little give and go, but it's spiked away. Evans plays it back for Dominguez. Interesting, Coach Shirabi for the Glens was just yelling at Maya Beltran and Nadia Gomes to switch, possibly putting Gomes up at the nine spot or center forward. The striker position it would be interesting to see. She's a player that if she does get up there, I'd imagine she's going to hold her line super high, really sit on that back line and wait for through balls forward because she has that electric speed that she can beat players 1v1 when on the run. So now you can see Gomes really sitting high in that nine position playing striker where Beltran was previously and she's now slid out to the wing. solid defensively in this first half. Not a whole lot of open space for Oakland to work with. And that one rolls out of play. Out of the reach of Sarah Murr throwing San Francisco. This old defense has really settled in though. They haven't allowed the Glens a lot of clean chances as the half has worn on. After those first two goals it seemed like they started to collect themselves as the half has gone on. Make a lot of better decisions in terms of defense, better shape, and now they've started to threaten a little bit, but still haven't created a lot of great chances around the 18. But the Glens also have slowed down in terms of chances around the 18. They've fired a couple from outside the box, but in terms of clear chances inside the box, the Soul have been doing a better job of playing compact and not letting them get inside. Near turnover, but a whistle and a foul will give it back over to Oakland. Well, for the latest in Bay Area sports, check out Sports Night Live, which airs weeknights at 10.45 p.m. on Cron 4. You might see highlights from today on there. Sports Night Live every weeknight, 10.45 on Cron 4. Mia Buda, nice run. Tried to take a shot, went off the back of one of the sole defenders like that was Sydney Shepard, and it will be a corner kick. Good step there by Shepard, but I mentioned Mia Buddha is a player who doesn't just do the dirty work defensively. She's also super dangerous with the ball at her feet. You just saw that electric speed. She can blow by players. She has the change of pace. In addition to that speed, just out in open space, when she drives forward confidently, she's super dangerous. That corner played low, but it was handled. Nice play defensively by Mia Watanabe a former Glenn, and clears it out. Watanabe also a Stanford product as well, was a part of the Pac-12 champion team this last season. Has been on the Stanford roster for a couple of seasons along with Lee Evans. This is Evans with the ball now for the Glens. One thing to note about the Stanford group is Jasmine Ike not in the lineup today for the San Francisco Glens. Typically has been playing in the midfield, often in the 10 spot, and has been really crucial to that midfield triangle. She has been dealing with a minor injury, unfortunately. She's one of the best players in the country for her age at the collegiate level, was an all-conference selection, and has been a major impact player, so certainly a loss in the midfield today, but you wouldn't be able to tell by the way the Glens have been playing. However, Jasmine Ike is super powerful, has a laser strike, is really calm with the ball at her feet, is just an elite athlete, so she's one who can dominate games. Nice move by Halliday. Cross, back post, rolls through. Well, to your point about Ike, she is a terrific player, and again, it just sort of speaks to the depth of this Glens team. She's not in the lineup today, but as you said, Kylan, they haven't missed a beat. So much depth on this roster for Mike Sharabi and his coaching staff. I think one of the toughest parts every week is picking the 18 that are gonna be active because so many players are deserving and you only have a certain number of spots. Certainly a lot of depth for the Glens, and that's one of the big reasons why they came into this match at 10-1-1 on the season, despite the fact that there have been so many changes for the roster, for the starting 11. 
but the next man up mentality in addition to the quality of skill of the players who are on the bench week in and week out has led to this group being so successful despite having to deal with last minute changes every week good positioning there by buddha takes it away her pass to Lagier tried to touch it to gomes and armis picks it up now, just in general, keep in mind, these are really tough conditions to play a controlled style of soccer and to really play pretty soccer when you've got the wind that's such a huge factor. It's cold as well. Your muscles tighten up. It's just not easy to play in this 55-degree high wind situation, overcast skies. It's, it's, not an easy, it's not easy weather to compete in at the highest level you maybe want to. Look here with the steal. Puts it on goal and a diving save by Armas. She couldn't squeeze it, and that's going to turn into a corner. It was a good look for San Francisco, but an even better save, diving left, anticipating it well, and successfully knocking it away. Good work there by Armas. 44th minute now as Gomes plays the corner kick past Marcis. She chases down Halliday. She'll get there in the corner. Shineman, good defense and a goal kick. Another errant corner kick for the Glens. I liked the pace and the height on that ball much better than some of their previous corners. However, it was just too far towards the back of the 18. You want to send that ball across the edge of the six or at least around the penalty spot area where you do have players crashing on goal. It was just sent behind everyone to where no one could really cleanly run onto that ball. And then you're forced to try to collect it clear back to goal to create something out the other direction, which, which is a tough ask. Well, congratulations to the Olympic Club Foundation on over 30 years of serving the community and making sure everyone can play. As we're now into the 45th minute of this Western Conference semifinal, only two goals of the match belonging to the Glens. Nadia Gomes in the fourth minute. Karina Laguerre in the ninth. The winner moves on to Sunday's Western Conference final. We'll see how much stoppage time they add. Probably not a ton. They'll say one minute of stoppage time here in this first half. First half has really flowed pretty quickly. You mentioned a pretty clean game. No cards have been issued so far. No major fouls, no injuries or even temporary injuries so far. So a positive to see for sure. We'll see if the Glens can get one more late one in this first half. sort of spins toward the end line and it'll be a goal kick. Check that a corner. So that was off a of soul and Glenn's yeah, obviously a third goal would be huge. Yeah, just took a little deflection there. Really looking for some better execution from the Glens here on this corner kick. They've had several. Play it short and again, nothing doing. Now a shot from outside the box. Maybe I spoke too soon. A laser from Nadia Gomes. And there's that third goal. Marciz, check that. Peyton Marciz. Or was it Gomes? Ryan, Ryan's trying to, to mess me <laughs> up over there. Sabotage us, dear. I mean, wow. Wow, wow, wow. An absolute screamer from Nadia Gomes from well outside the 18. She is elite in her finishing with both feet, takes that ball off the hop and just absolutely rips it on goal. Glenn's did a better job on that corner kick in terms of running down and challenging the second ball, continuing to keep it in a dangerous area. And then Gomes just absolutely rails on that one. I mean, there was no stopping that. Just absolutely elite technique on the finish. Great confidence in terms of taking that strike on net and just that is a world-class finish from Nadia Gomes. One last gasp here from the soul, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. And what a big third goal that could be, knowing that the soul will have the wind at their back in the second half. Two goals for Nadia Gomes, one goal for Karina Laguerre, and an impressive first 45 minutes from the Glens.
that last goal from Nadia Gomes is crucial because that completely changes the momentum going into halftime. The soul, if you're down by two, you feel a little bit better about where you stand. One goal puts you right back into it and right back into a position to tie the game up. Now down three, you just gave up an absolute screamer moments before that halftime whistle. Heads hanging a little bit going into this meeting. You feel a little bit of a blow to the confidence, and it's just a tough goal to give up moments before the whistle, and now you're down three, and suddenly you've got to make up three to equalize. Well, don't go anywhere. We've got a great halftime show presented by Thomas Quinn Law. Kylan, you did an interview with Amanda Vandervoort, the USLW League and Super League president, and that is pretty important with these two teams trying to move up again. Marissa and Jemmy had a great story in the San Francisco Chronicle this week if you want to check it out. But that's coming up next on our halftime show, and it's the Glens with the three-goal halftime lead over the Oakland Soul. That's quick. You got a strawberry back there? That's chocolate. That's vanilla. Quit playing. Now we're talking. Bunnies up, buddy. Here's to that classic delicious taste. Bunnies up, buddy. You look good. You feel good. So we got you some nice stuff. Check it out. Guardsmen. I serve the people of the United States. I will protect them. I will save them. I am their shield. We are. We are. We are. missing poses. You mean passes? No, poses. The secret to winning is to pose. Time out! I'm taking a step back. What's the reason? Sometimes you gotta stop to be, you know, an actual human. Take a minute to celebrate, right? 420. Cause is power. Let's quit. You got a strawberry back there? That's chocolate. That's vanilla. Quit playing. Now we're talking. Bunnies up, buddy. Here's to that classic delicious taste. Bunnies up, buddy. And we are joined now on time of our broadcast by Amanda Vandervoort, president of the Super League and W League. Such a huge figure in women's soccer. Thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us here on the broadcast. Awesome. Thank you for having me. All right, well, we're going to start with talking about the W League just a little bit. The San Francisco Glens here specifically in the Bay Area off to a huge start as an expansion club. The women's side being number one in the power rankings is really exciting to see this week. For you, what's it been like to see just the strong level of competition for these West Coast clubs just joining, joining the league? Yeah, well, you know, we ex ex expanded the league from 44 teams last year to 65 this year in, in 2023 and expect further expansion in, in the years ahead. So this uh, Northern California division has been critical for us in, in building out that national footprint and seeing the level of competition, the impact, and really the commitment of all of our teams in Northern California has been, has been absolutely spectacular. We're so proud of the entire group. I know that you came out and did a tour as well here in the Bay Area. What were your impressions of the Bay specifically and getting to meet some of the folks around Bay Area soccer? Oh, I love it. I love it. I lived in San Francisco for five years. So for me, it felt like a homecoming. Um, you know, that. I, yeah, I, I'm meeting with all the people. I got to meet all the, all the different teams when I was out there and the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement for the W League um, and for women's soccer, you know, in Northern California was just, it, it was unbelievable. Now, for folks who maybe are learning a little bit more about what the W League is, how does this help players make it to that next step of becoming professional soccer players? Yeah, that's something we're really proud of at the USL is that youth to pro pathway and making sure we can facilitate players at 
that whatever they are in their journey, right? We're really matching talent with opportunity. And at the W League, it really sits at that precipice of a player's journey when they're in college or maybe right before or after they've graduated college, giving them a really professional environment to play in uh, in the summer times in a pre-professional league. So um, the level of competition is, is incredibly high. Our standards are equally as high, and that gives players a place to play where they can feel confident that they'll develop as players, as people, and and they can see a future as a professional player too. Now, taking the next step in that professional pathway, the USL just announced the Super League. You are the president of that. You're going to be leading the charge. Explain to people at home, what is the USL Super League going to be? Yeah, the USL Super League, professional women's soccer, coming closer to home in cities across this country. And uh, we are we announced last week initial our initial eight markets um that'll be playing in 2024 plus an additional number of markets that'll be coming in the years ahead and uh, you'll see in august 2024 10 to 12 teams kick off across this country coast to coast in the new women's professional league so we couldn't be more excited and more proud of all of our clubs um, all of the people involved in bringing this to life and the next 15 months ahead that we get to work towards kickoff I mean, women's soccer is already so popular in the United States, but it keeps exploding. How will this add another opportunity for some of these young athletes who are up and coming? Yeah, listen, today there are 12 professional women's teams in this country. There's over 100 men's professional teams. That opportunity gap is something that we're really excited to be to fill, really, and create more jobs, more opportunities in more communities for more women to play soccer, work in soccer, watch soccer, talk about soccer, work in media, all the different industries and professional like opportunities that go with professional sports. And in particular, for all those little girls across this country who dream of one day being a professional athlete, now there are more and more opportunities in, in, in their hometowns and, and closer to home for a lot of them. Now, you're planning on launching this league in August of 2024. That's going to be here before we know it. That's just, you know, a year and change off. What are the next steps in getting this league together? Yeah, I mean, announcing announcing the markets was, was the first step. But clearly, as you're building out an entire league, you've got um, branding. So we're, a lot of our clubs are starting to build their brands, work in, with the communities and engage the communities and in, in what that club, um, how they bring their clubs to life in all these cities. And then... Of course, we're hiring front office staff, we're hiring coaches, we're building player pools, we're building rosters. You know, there's a lot of work that goes in over the next year, and uh, it's going to be such an exciting time. Now, you mentioned the roster aspect. For players who are interested, what is the recruiting process going to be like? Are any of these teams going to be having open tryouts? Or kind of what do you visualize for the model in attracting players to this league, especially as you're opening just as a brand new league? Yeah, the first thing for us that we're really focused on is building a league where players want to play. And so um, what does that mean? For us, it starts with the competition structure and making sure we're actually playing on what's known as the international calendar. So we'll be playing in the fall all the way through to um, the following spring, summer, June, the August to June calendar. So that allows players um, to play in the summertime in the Women's World Cup, which you'll see obviously this summer we're in Australia, New Zealand for the Women's World Cup the next summer for the Olympics. So it allows players to balance their club and country schedules. That's one example of how we're building a league where players want to play. And so as we look towards the future, yeah, we'll announce details uh, for, for players who are interested in, in getting involved and exactly what the steps are for them. But clearly our clubs are going to be on the recruiting trail and uh, working hard to identify the players um, you know, that, that they want to bring into their clubs and represent their great cities. And you brought up a great point in, in regards to matching up the schedule with the international schedule, allowing players to be a part of also representing their country. Are there any other differences that people might see with this league in particular that are geared towards the players? Yeah, well, um, another another one is that we're, um, well, the international calendar and then, you know, we're not, we're planning, we're not planning to have a draft. So actually oh, wow. for our clubs to go out and recruit players, um, you know, individually and talk with clubs about coming to the cities where, where our clubs are located is something that's, that's really important to us. And we think that that's a unique opportunity for players. Um, so, yeah. 
Um, now you announced the news maybe a couple of weeks ago. I can't believe time is flying. It feels like you just announced it yesterday. But what has the reception been like? Uh, you know, are people excited to see this? How have soccer fans and women soccer supporters been receiving this news? Oh, it's been unbelievable. It's been so positive. Listen, there's 40,000 women playing college soccer in this country today. And now those women all see more and more opportunities to work in the game that we love so much. And so the reception across the game, whether it's at that level, whether it's youth soccer and communities in all these cities, um, you know, in San Francisco, in, uh, in Phoenix, where I am now, in Tampa, where the league office is, all these amazing cities, the communities have really rallied behind it and shown us how excited they are and, and how ready we are in this country right now for more professional sports opportunities, professional soccer opportunities for women. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, last question, we kind of touched on it, but just, what does this mean to the little girls out there who are playing soccer? Because that's one thing to me that just always hits close to home is when, you know, even here in the Bay Area where we haven't had any kind of professional team, seeing all the little girls who want those role models to look up to, want those strong women in their community that they say, I can be like her. You know, what does that mean to you to be able to provide that to them? Yeah, I mean, that's everything. I know when I was a little girl and I, I looked up, I didn't see professional soccer players and it wasn't an opportunity for me and today I mean I'm I'm in I'm in Phoenix my niece my family lives here and last night I sat down with my niece and we talked about a future where she can be a professional you know player or, or work in professional women's sports and it was just it's such a moment for me as as an auntie but also knowing that you know my passion is is of positively affecting people's lives through soccer and I think that that's what we see for for all those little girls and all those communities who now can look up and say wow I can be a professional soccer player one day um, you know we learn so many skills through soccer whether it's leadership whether it's collaboration we meet so many friends and and you know have the opportunity to develop um, as as people and as professionals and um, I'm just so proud and so excited to be able to deliver that opportunity through the USL Super League. Love it. Love it so, so much. You were doing awesome work, Amanda. Okay, my last, last, last question. For you can ask as many questions as you want. It's okay. I love yeah, talking perfect, about your Super perfect. League. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Um, my question for you is just, I know with the USL Super League, that's still getting off the ground, but is there anything people can do who are watching this to support the USL Super League or even just to support the USLW League right now? Yeah, well, this, let's start with the W League, right? Like, get out to games, um, support your team, support your players, um, and watch online, follow on social media, right? USL um, W League, really, the, the, the turnout, the, the energy, the excitement we've seen in the W League has just absolutely blown me away, and I'm so proud. And I know everyone who gets out to a game will, will absolutely love every moment. So get out to the Glens um, and support your local club. Uh, and then, yeah, the Super League right now, I think um, clearly uh, we're building. We're building right now. So USLSuperLeague.com, you can go online, learn about all the different markets that we're in, follow on social, and send us, you know, send us images of, of you playing soccer and, and how excited you are about the future of the league because we want to celebrate and join this journey along with, with all the fans out there. Awesome. Amanda Vandervoort, president of USL Super League and W League. Thank you so much for hanging out with us here on the broadcast. It has been an absolute blast. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Go ahead. And we are back at Skyline College halftime of this Western Conference semifinal. <laughs> the Glens with a 3-0 lead on the Oakland Soul. Let's take a look at our first half stats here as we continue on the halftime show presented by Thomas Quinn Law. And as you might expect, it was all Glens in that first half. Look at the shots, 14 to none for Oakland. But I know, Kylan, that could likely change here in this second half when the wind is at Oakland's back. The Glens really came out and dominated the tempo of the game early. Oakland did a better job in terms of their defensive shape, their structure, not allowing the Glens to penetrate easily as the half went on. However, Oakland now has to do a better job of having meaningful possession, working the ball up the field, and then trying to create some chances on goal. Zero shots, not a good stat line and not a good look for Oakland so far, but with the wins at their back, they should have a little bit of a boost in terms of not having to play the ball forward into the wind, also not having to run into the wind, which just is more difficult because 
because you are running with the wind at your face. So that should provide a little bit of extra momentum for Oakland moving into the second 45. By the way, that should be zero yellow cards both sides. We don't want to get anyone worried there about Oakland. It was a clean played first half. No yellow cards, no red cards either way. And as we mentioned, the soul will now have the wind advantage in the second half, and we'll see if they can get back into this one down by three. The goals in this one scored two of them by Nadia Gomes. She had the first goal of the match in the fourth minute and another one in stoppage time. And then in between, the newcomer, Karina Laguerre, with the goal in the ninth minute for San Francisco. And as you saw there, 10 shots on goal, 14 shots total, none for the soul, a really strong defensive half for the Glens, and we'll see. They're up by three, but they know as well as anyone how quickly things can turn at this field. They trailed the California Storm recently here, 3-0, scored four straight second-half goals to take the lead. Ultimately, it was a 4-4 tie, but again, when you got the wind, it's a game changer, and this one is far from over. That third goal by Nadia Gomes just before half was so critical for the Huge. momentum for the Glens. Going into halftime, down two goals, the Soul aren't in a bad position knowing they're going to come out with the wins at their back in the second half. Going into halftime, down three, and you just gave up an absolute screamer seconds before the halftime whistle. It affects the mentality. It affects the confidence of the group. The Soul didn't look quite as energized walking into their halftime huddle as they did coming out for kickoff. Now it's a matter of can they reset? Did they have those conversations about adjustments that need to be made? Can they reset the mentality and realize that down three goals, this Soul team certainly has the talent to continue to battle back, and this game is far from over. So the team's back out on the pitch. We're getting close to this second half. The winner of this Western Conference semifinal will advance to play Sunday against the winner of tonight's game between Ole Town FC and the California Storm. And again, that one will be 12.30 p.m. If the Glens win, they will host, and that would be a Cron on broadcast, but still 45 minutes left and work to do to close this one out for San Francisco. These two teams meeting twice in the regular season, each team winning at home, and now the Glens trying to keep that trend going today. A key for the Glens in the second half is going to be transition defense. It's going to be even more important now that they're playing into the win. The Oakland Soul, when they do win the ball or they're able to dispossess the Glens, they're going to look to get the ball forward quickly and they're going to have a little bit of an extra burst because of the wind at their backs. The Glens are going to have to be super smart and clinical in terms of keeping their defensive shape, getting structure, getting numbers behind the ball quickly when they do lose it. That's going to be a big focus for this group and a key heading into the second 45. We do have two subs from the Soul to report Malia Yamamoto into the match, replacing Jada Nyby. And Jordan Geis replaces Sarah Murr. And I'm sure we'll see some more subs from both sides as this second half goes on. We're underway. And the Soul trying to get an early one to get back into this match down by three. It's also going to be super important for the soul. It's going to be super important for the soul of the second half to try to connect passes. That's the one thing they struggled with in the first half. Well, they did a better job of gaining their defensive shape as the half went on. They did a better job of putting the Glens under pressure, winning the ball. But once they won it, it was a matter of connecting that pass to play the ball forward or to get possession comfortably amongst their back four. So coming out aggressive and good defense by the Glens cleared out of the way. It looks like America Frias is into the match for the Glens, number 19 in green, a newcomer making her Glens debut. And now here's Gomes down the left side. She's already got two goals in this match. Cross. A shot and a goal! Ellie Piper makes it 4-0. There we go! Well, how big is that? We talk about the soul with the wind at their backs and a chance maybe to 
get an early one and get back into the into the game. Instead, it's the Glens making it a four goal lead. That was just an absolutely elite, elite attack from the left side. Nadia Gomes turned on the Jets, used that burst of speed to get by her defender, get to the end line, then send in a really pretty cross. The Glens did an excellent job of having several players just crashing inside the box. And then Piper did an excellent job of coming into the attack from the outside back position. She's a player who I mentioned is also a threat despite being in the back line. She reads balls well, she can swing crosses in, and then she did a good job of crashing the box at the right time, and then ultimately getting that shot on goal to fall low and away. So Piper scores the goal, Nadia Gomes gets the assist. And a four goal lead here in the 48th minute now for the Glens. I mean, how about Nadia Gomes with a brace and assist? here through the first 48. She is a player who is just unstoppable in USLW League action. She has that burst of speed. She has the elite technical skill. She can finish with both feet while also handling the ball in tight spaces. A beautiful cross played over on that one and then Piper just in the right place at the right time making an aggressive run forward and putting it away. Back for Dominguez who has not faced a shot yet in goal for the Glens today. First goal in the second half is a crucial one. If the Oakland Soul had come out and scored just moments in, then they're trailing by two and suddenly feel like they have signs of life with plenty of momentum moving forward with the wins at their back. Now that the Glen scored moments in, a four-goal deficit for Oakland is going to be really tough to overcome, even with the win as a factor. Yeah, there's no question that one is huge and we talk about the momentum changer at the end of the half with Gomes scoring her second goal in stoppage time. You go from 2-0 to 4-0 just like that and the Glens feel like they're in control of this match. So let's see if the Soul can get something going here offensively. They haven't had a shot yet in this game and more good pressure defense and a turnover taken away by the Glens. Buddha tripped up, draws a whistle. Yeah, that was a clear foul contact there on the thigh. Buddha was running through and trying to possess. Clearly a whistle and a little conversation being had with Miranda Nild. Elise Evans will take the free kick for the Glens. Nild, by the way, was a team captain at Cal back in 2016. One of the players, so I mentioned the Oakland Soul have who is past college so a little bit more consistency and experience for this Soul group in terms of having some of those post-collegiate players. Glenn's with a lot of young talent 16 even 17 years old. That could be another interesting way where Nadia Gomes is so important to this team is this one into the box. Could she get a shot away? Halliday back, shot wide. Nearly a fifth goal for the Glens, but the Soul able to dodge trouble. Just going back to my point on Gomes, though. We talk about everything she does on the stat sheet, but also being 26 years old, having that experience with such a young team, I think that can certainly be helpful for a lot of the young talent the Glens have. It is helpful, and Nadia Gomes isn't an outspoken player. She's not one who you're going to hear really directing or necessarily being overly vocal on the field. She's a player who leads by example. She has that professionalism from playing in the NWSL and being drafted into the NWSL a couple of years ago. She brings that work rate to every single practice. She treats it like a professional setting. She comes in and brings that same attitude and mentality to games and it's something that young players can learn from just by watching her and following her lead in that way. Piper back for Dominguez. High in the air and it just hits a wall of wind and stays right there. Hayashi trying to get to it for the soul but it's back away for the Glens. Gomes, her ball didn't get through but she follows up. She's so relentless. Nice play, here come the Soul. That was N.R. Urteaga. And now the sub giving chase Jordan Geis. Taken back away by Evans. And she curls it ahead to Gomes.
Well, with offices in California, Texas, and Illinois, Thomas Quinn is able to provide quality national and international representation for maritime law. <laughs> As Gomes takes it the other way. Thomas Quinn Law emphasizes a personal touch, experienced, client-focused, and effective. Thomas Quinn Law, 53rd minute, 4-0. San Francisco Glens in control of this Western Conference semifinal against the rival Oakland Soul. That'll be a foul against the Glens. Not a bad tactical foul there by the Glens as Oakland had some numbers as they were looking to take advantage of transition. Not a bad area where you want to stop the ball, pause the play, and allow your teammates to get numbers behind. So a free kick here for the Soul. Trying to get something going. It might even be a matter of just getting that first shot. Trying to get the floodgates open a little bit offensively is that one played into the box Evans got her head on it there's a shot and it's just wide pretty good look great chance there for the soul first it was a nice ball played in on the free kick just into a dangerous area where there were a number of players running on Elise Evans for the Glens was able to get there first however that second ball super dangerous it fell right to the feet of a soul player who was completely unmarked. The Glens have to do a better job of staying with their mark, whether it's someone who's crashing the 18 or hanging out outside the 18 because those rebounds can be so deadly as we see, saw Nadia Gomes finish one just before half. Those second balls, third balls can be just as dangerous and a deflection out of the 18 can still lead to a goal. So this will be a throw in now for Oakland. Aliyah Shineman, another Cal Bear. That ball nearly kept in play, but not quite. Better moments here for the Soul in the last couple minutes in the second half. At least getting the ball up the field, getting that first shot they've been looking for. The Soul did not have a shot in the first half. And this here's some good pressure. They're able to force a Glenn's turnover and now keep the ball in their attacking third and try to get numbers forward. It's an Oakland Soul team that only lost twice during the regular season, 10 and two. They finished a point behind the Glens in the NorCal division. Top two teams in the division going at it here for a spot in the final eight. That'll be on Sunday, the Western Conference final. Winner of this match against the winner of Oli Town FC and the California Storm. Both of these teams in their first year in the USLW League, and they have taken the league by storm. 20 combined wins out of their 24 matches. Glenn's looking for more. Good defense, and it's played back. Good recovery no. there by the Soul, despite Halliday really getting forward with some pace. Piper for Gomes. She's already got two goals and an assist. Low cross, shot high. That was Halliday. Tough, tough ball because Halliday's first touch jumped up on her a little bit and then trying to strike it on that second one on the bounce. A little bit tough. It looked like she leaned back a little too far, got that toe up and just sailed that one over but it wasn't a bad buildup by the Glens in terms of sending that cross in. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Oakland Soul look to play more direct. Here's a run. Miranda Nilt shielding off a couple of defenders, waiting for some help. And solid defense, Piper boots it out of bounds. A clear shirt tug there. The Oakland Soul staff not entirely happy. There was no whistle. I happen to agree. Definitely L. Piper put her hand out and grabbed and tugged on that jersey. The officials opt to play on. There was a little bit of counteraction as well, though, after the fact that maybe led to that and where the Soul player also did a little jersey tug. But initially, it did look like that should have been a call. So a throw in from Piper. And Elise Evans. So sturdy on that back line. 
for Mia Buda. Kudos to all the fans that came out today, by the way. We mentioned the brutal conditions for players, but also fans in attendance here today dealing with high winds, 55 degrees, overcast skies, just not easy conditions to play in and not necessarily the most fun conditions to watch a soccer game in, but still some folks out here today. Great ball, shot. It's still loose and it stays out. What a save by Armas. Clear goal scoring chance for the Glens. They should have made it five right there. A point blank opportunity on goal, but a good save as well by Armas. There's Marcis with the chance. Layla Armas, a diving save. Yeah, great anticipation and good execution by the sole keeper. Piper. And that's well off to the left. Well, to your point about the fans, Kylan, a, a great representation from both sides here. A lot of Oakland Soul fans making the trip, bracing these uh, heavy winds and the cold temperatures, and of course the Glens. Also well represented by their fan base. That's a great tackle. Just a really well-timed tackle. Good use of her body by Piper. Just a great piece of individual defending right there. Piper has a goal in today's game. She's been good on both ends of the field. There's a long shot in the first one on goal. No problem for Dominguez as Hayashi had the chance. So far, Dominguez hasn't had a lot of action between the pipes for the San Francisco Glens, but she has looked solid. One thing about Dominguez is that she's really good with her feet. She's comfortable when she does receive the ball on the ground. That's huge for the Glens because they do like to build out the back and they want to incorporate their keeper in their possession. Nild plays it back for Arteaga. And back come the Glens the other way. Gomes with some space. Two goals and an assist today. Gomes cuts it back. Still with it to the center. Shoots and a save by Armas. Good 1v1 defending by the Soul back line to keep Gomes in front when she did get out in some space there. However, Nadia Gomes is a player who can get a shot off in any type of condition. She took that bump, caught middle. She was completely facing horizontal towards the touchline and was able to swing her hips around the ball and even get that on a frame. That's a really tough angle to try to put that on when your body is completely facing the touchline. So the fact that she even put that on frame was impressive, just unfortunately right at the keeper. Didn't get a ton of power on it, but that's just not an easy one to try to put on goal. Gomes, a chance at a hat trick today. Two goals and an assist so far. She's now got 14 goals in 13 games this season, including today's playoff game. As Evans has to be careful here, and she'll give up the corner. Not the worst thing in the world if you're the Glens now in the 61st minute, a four goal lead. Don't want to give up any good chances. They'll sacrifice the corner here, the first one of the day for the soul. Tough to keep the ball in play with these wins. I like that. Nice and low into the box. And a shot blocked. That was, it looked like Samantha Tran with the chance. So another corner here. It was a good corner kick because it was driven in with some pace, a little bit lower, not overhead height, which in these wins is going to be a better ball played in because it won't carry over the end line. If you play it in with that pace and a little bit lower across the six, you give your teammates a chance. Arteaga sends this one far post. And that one. Carried a little bit by the wind. Yeah, that's what's going to happen when you do loft these balls a little bit higher with the wind at your back. It's so hard to keep it in play. You have to over-rotate a little bit and play it like you're trying to kick it farther out than you want to, knowing the wind's going to blow it back on frame. But it's certainly not easy to try to anticipate the right angle when playing it into the wind. Especially when you don't get a chance to play here that often. Nice Elite play. Touch. Gomes. Pretty through ball. And a shot gets blocked. 
Not out of harm's way yet. Marciz steps up. Her ball into the box. A collision. Armas got a hand on it. And it stays out. And now a long run. Here comes Miranda Nild. Her shot wide to the left. Best chance of the day for the soul. He took the words right out of my mouth. That's what I was thinking in that very moment. Great chance for the soul. Their best on the day, and that's going to be an area they need to look to exploit is those transition and counterattack moments when they can play the ball forward, play it direct, and try to put one of the Glens defenders into a 1v1 situation running at their own net. It's difficult to defend. That time they were able to get out in space. Unfortunately, the shot just sent wide. So it remains 4-0. 63rd minute. Glenn's trying to advance to Sunday's Western Conference Finals. And that will be a foul on the tackle. I'll tell you something, Kylan. You know, getting to do a couple of games with uh, Coach JT Thomas this year, and I feel like something she pointed out that I can't unsee now is I just love how quickly in the women's soccer game the players get back up. I feel like there's much <laughs> less acting than you see in the men's game. That's because women are tough, Ben. It's true. <laughs> I mean, every tackle you see, every foul, they're back up. I mean, unless someone's actually injured. And I like to see it. It keeps the game moving. Much better flow than... You know. It's something that's noticeable at the professional level, going a level up as well. In the NWSL and European leagues, compared to the men, women tend to stay on their feet more in general. And when they do go down, it's because there was actually a foul, not quite as much trying to sell the ref right. in the women's game as there in the me is in the men's. I don't even mind trying to sell the call. I, I get that. That happens in every sport. But I, I just like how quickly we get back underway. Get back on your feet. And the game is back on. It's because women run the world, but we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> Tell you what, these women do run the world. These two teams have been phenomenal this year. And Glenn's making a statement so far in this one, up by four. And some more great defense by Piper. Piper once again using strong body position, just somehow able to get a foot on that ball and prevent that attack situation. After getting a step behind, I don't know how she recovered there, honestly. Here's a look for Jordan Geis. Came in as a sub at halftime, has had some good touches. The Soul trying to at least get on the scoreboard here, 65th minute. And they regain possession. Geis, her cross goes through. And it will be a goal kick. Well, Concentric is a private risk consultancy firm that specializes in strategic security and intelligence services for physical and cyber needs. It's your journey with Concentric Advisors. Keep an eye on Jordan Geis. She's a player who is strong in terms of finishing, good technical skills, attends Archbishop Midi High School, and is committed to play at UCLA for the defending national champions in 2024. We've got a couple of UCLA ties in this matchup, but just one of the most dominant teams in the country. So certainly speaks to the level of talent out here to have multiple UCLA players represented. How good is West Coast soccer? You talk about UCLA, obviously Santa Clara winning the national championship recently. We've talked Stanford about BYU, well. Stanford, Cal. The Bay Area is elite in terms of soccer from top to bottom, uh, which is why it's so exciting an NWSL team is coming here in addition to the Super League next year becoming a professional league, and that's something. Here's a chance. The shot gets blocked and somehow stays out. Wow, NR Tiaga nearly got the soul on the board. It will be a corner kick. Big chance here. That was, we just said it a couple of moments ago, the best chance of the day for the soul, but another great chance created, really starting to show signs of life here. Is it too little too late? That remains to be seen. And the Glens defend that corner well. One thing to note, though, was that next year, 
the Oakland Soul, or next year, the USL is going to be launching a new Super League, which is aimed at being a first division league. Offside flag up. The Oakland Soul not happy with the call. They're, they're coaching staff up off their feet as the whistle is blown there. But next to the USL launching the Super League, which is aimed at being a first division league that will be on the same level as the NWSL. So very exciting to see more options for women to be able to play the professional game mm -hmm. in the United States. The Oakland Soul are supposed to be joining that league in the approaching years. And so... And we'll see it's if the Glens awesome perhaps end up joining that league at some point, too. Absolutely, and that's something that the Glens have their eye on as well. So it'll be really exciting to see if we get multiple teams of professional women here in the Bay Area. It's long overdue with the level of talent. The collegiate game so strong here, the youth competition as well. Domes, dangerous ball. Armis smothers it. Good idea by Gomes and that player running on America Frias. One player to watch in this Glens attack inserted into the second half. Another player with UCLA ties was a freshman for the Bruins last season. Played in eight matches and has international experience as well. She's a player who has speed up top, physicality, technical skills. Just the combination you're looking for playing up there at the nine. So keep an eye on her to see the impact she can make as the half goes on. The most recent substitution for the soul was Caitlin Brinkman entering the match. She's got four goals this year. An all region second team player for Cal State Fullerton. Great touch. Guns have been so pinpoint with their passes. That's a tough ball. You saw that one just die in the air. That's where the wind plays the big factor. But no problem. Get to it again. Time starting to run out here for the soul. We're in the 70th minute. That's the thing, the Glens just want to play really compact and really smart defensively with just about 20 minutes to go holding on to this four goal lead. Don't give up anything easy. Don't give up anything in transition. And more good defense. And then try to possess as much as you can. You can't score if you have the ball. And then later in the game, I expect to see them look to just play it up the field, possibly try to burn some time off by holding it in the corner. I think at this point, if you're the soul, you've got to really press up take some chances great passing just elite work by the Glens defense playing it into their midfield and able to work it up to Gomes at the wing here she comes one on two nice recovery by Jordan Geis came all the way back and took it away excellent work rate by Geis Nild stops up plays back for Geis Everyone sort of stopped playing, but no whistle yet. Nild chases down, keeps it in play. Her pass into the box, shot off the post, and it stayed out. Up in the air, Dominguez punches it away. Wow, the soul nearly getting one. And that will sail wide. The Glens all stopped and put their arms up and we're looking at the AR on the sideline, looking to the head referee, but the whistle wasn't blown, so you got to play on. It's so important that you continue to play until you hear that whistle and the referee officially indicates to stop. Otherwise, they could have gotten caught sleeping there. It was a great chance for the Oakland Soul. Unfortunately, just a game of inches as that one rings off the post. Frias couldn't win that race. Sydney also, Shepard got there for the soul. Also, Shepard wide open in the box. The Glens have got to do a better job of tracking there and making sure that they're communicating about the marks that they're tracking on the run in the 18. Nice defensive play by Urteaga to take it away. See the goals there. Two of them for Nadia Gomes, Karina Laguerre, and Ellie Piper. Watch the soul here holding their line much higher. 
They're going to want to continue to do that if they want to try to pop in a couple quickly. They've still been pretty successful when they have been able to hold their line high and put the Glens under pressure, force the ball over in a dangerous area of the field. That's exactly what they executed right there. And a free kick for the Soul. We'll see how they want to play this. You could definitely shoot from here, especially with the wind. Urteaga. Yeah, it's a little bit lofty because it's far out, but with the wind at your back, a bad idea to take a shot on goal. It would be interesting to see how they handle this. Four-woman wall for the Glens. Chip. And it goes wide right. Tough one to chip there by Ortega because of the wind at your back. If you're looking to try to chip it forward to connect with a teammate, that wind is going to carry it over the end line so easily. It really would take a light touch to try to keep that one in play. Good pressure here from the sole. Ball high in the air. Curves back toward the box. Urteaga with the header. Still in play. And cross to the other side. Shineman chases it down. Puts it right back into the 18. The soul still playing with lots of effort and energy. Down by four goals, but they're not quitting. The Soul have been doing a much better job later in this half of holding their line high and applying pressure to the Glens back line. The Glens have had a couple of bad turnovers in their defensive third because of the high pressure of the Soul. They're successful in winning the ball back in dangerous areas of the field, and that's led to them creating a couple of goal scoring chances. Now here come the Glens. Gomes with a touch to Piper. Long shot. That's wide. Piper had the time and space to pick her head up, but not necessarily a shot you need to take when you're up by four goals in a playoff game in the 74th minute. Maybe you just opt to sit on the ball there, play a little bit more patient to try to either create a goal scoring opportunity or just maintain possession rather than taking a crack at it from distance. Claire Robke will come into the match for the Oakland Soul. Some good chance creation, though, by Oakland. That last one that Nil got just on the end line. Just wish she would have laid it across on the ground instead of nailing that deep cross that she sent in that ended up almost going out of play. They were able to recollect, but she had a couple of players running on. If she could have just slotted it back, possibly could have connected. Aliyah Shinneman, the player that comes off for Oakland. Here's Marciz. Gomes on the right side, cuts it. She likes to go to that left foot, well defended. Guys came over to help out and take it away for the soul. But a good recovery for the Glens defensively. And that will roll all the way to Dominguez. Some great individual efforts by the soul defense to contain Nadia Gomes. They've done a really good job. Here in the second half, Mia Watanabe in that 1v1 situation is able to keep Gomes in front, does a good job of keeping her body shape, moving her feet, and allow, not allowing Gomes to use that explosive speed to get by her. Gomes with two goals. Can she do it again, though? And an assist. She'll have to try. Gomes tries to chip it through, and maybe a little miscommunication there as that just rolled through to Armas. Good work by Watanabe once again. Gomes wasn't able to come up with that move to get by her. Well, for the latest in Bay Area sports, check out Sports Night Live, which airs weeknights at 10.45 p.m. on Cron 4. You might see highlights from today on there. Sports Night Live every weeknight at 10.45 on Cron 4. Another good play by Geis. Get that foot out. Mia Buddha chases down for San Francisco. Up by four goals. Into the 77th minute. The strategy for the Glens now is to possess the ball as much as possible. They cannot score on you. If you have possession, you don't need to play it upfield because you're not looking for another goal. Just hold on to the ball, make good decisions, and keep a strong defensive structure.
Here goes Gomes again. We'll see if she can get that hat trick. She's going to probably have some looks. Nice ball there for Frias. Tough collision in the 18. And now we get a whistle. A couple of substitutions coming for the Glens whenever they're able to. This is Marciz for Frias. Back to Marciz. Shoots just high. Some good passing, good connections there for the Glens. There was a clean look on goal from just outside the edge of the 18, and she was looking to pick out that upper right corner. Unfortunately, just that shot maybe a foot off. And here are those substitutions you mentioned, Maddie Samillo and Vanessa Aguilar into the match for San Francisco. Marciz comes off as does Jesse Halliday. Well, this has been start to finish a terrific performance by the Glens. They jumped ahead 3-0 at halftime with the wind at their back. We thought maybe the Soul would have a chance to get back in it in the second half when they had the wind, but the Glens came out, got an early goal in the second half to make it a four-goal lead, and they've really been in control from the get-go. Good skill there by Aguilar. Back to Dominguez. 79th minute. The Glens closing in on a trip to the Western Conference Finals. That would be Sunday at 12.30 against the winner of Ole Town FC and the California Storm. If California Storm makes it out of that one, man, that'll be a great matchup because the Glens and Storm have gone at it all season long. They've Same had thing some with good the Storm battles. and Seoul. I mean, there's just so much talent out here in Northern California amongst the USLW League. It has been fun to watch all of these teams trading wins, trading a lot of goals. Sunday should be a marquee matchup. L. Piper, she has a goal in this half her cross headed up in the air and cleared out yeah the california storm finished with 28 goals or points third place in the norcal division as that one a little bit too far for nilt not a bad idea for the soul they want to look to play direct because they need to score a goal quickly so just try to put that ball up the field give one of your strikers a chance to get in a foot race with the defender and win it and to put one away on a breakaway unfortunately though elise evans is really fast so she's going to be a tough defender to beat in those 1v1 foot race situations and also with the wind at your backs it's hard to keep the ball in play when you are looking to play it more direct good ball from piper and it's headed into the net and that makes it 5-0. And I believe it was Gomes for the hat trick. The San Francisco Glens just will not let up in this game. The Soul have been doing a better job as this half has gone on and creating chances, getting the ball up the field, putting it in dangerous spaces. But the Glens continue to do what they do best in terms of possessing, creating openings, looking to take advantage of transition moments, and that's exactly what they did in that situation. So Nadia Gomes, three goals and an assist. What a game for number seven. She's now got 15 goals on the year, 12 in the regular season, three in today's playoff matchup. 15 goals is going to put her among the tops in USLW League. Nadia Gomes has just been unstoppable, having an elite season. So special to see here for the Glens. Three goals and an assist today, but she's been doing it all season long. And an assist on that goal to Ellie Piper. So she has a goal and an assist, both coming in this half. And the Glens well on their way to advancing to Sunday. A statement performance after the Soul won the last matchup between these teams five days ago. Three to one. So here's Piper again. Sticks with it. 
Geis clears away. Now the Glens just have to see this one out. You're up five goals. Just about eight minutes remaining. Just see this one out. Keep it clean. If you can walk away and head into Sunday with a shutout, you feel even better about that complete performance. Not just getting it done in the attack, but also strong defensive work. They've been able to hold off the soul as they created some chances here in the second half. Individual efforts in good shape in terms of team defense. Glenn's wanted a foul there, perhaps even a card, but nothing coming. At least Evans. Fortunately, okay. Yeah, whistle hasn't blown a couple times in this game when it really could have. This officiating crew letting quite a bit go in this matchup for both sides. Look at the speed from Gomes bursting down the left side. Her cross for Frias. And the shot goes wide left. Nadia Gomes is a problem. There is nothing <laughs> else to say about her at this point because she has that elite burst of speed elite speed out in space yet she can also keep the ball on a string at her foot while also moving at that pace that's so difficult to do in terms of skill when you do have that pace she's still able to keep it under control and put the ball exactly where she wants it a great cross set in on the ground Nadia Gomes just does it all for this Glenn's attack and she's a player who's going to take them to the top throughout this playoffs This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Francisco Glen Soccer Club. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Thanks for joining us today on the Bay Area Online Sports Network. Ben Ross and Kylan Mills. The San Francisco Glens with five goals. Three thing, of them from Nadia Gomes. One thing you got to commend is the Oakland Soul for the season that they've had. They've put together some tremendous performances coming in second place in the highly competitive Northern California division of the USLW League. Certainly a team that has a lot of talent, a lot of quality from top to bottom. The Glens just flat out have been the better team from top to bottom today, but certainly nothing to hang their heads about for the Oakland Soul. Absolutely. You don't go 10 and 2 by accident and outscore your opponents 37 to 13, which is what the Soul did during the regular season. Hasn't gone the way they had hoped today. And of course, the elements have been tough as we'll get a few more substitutions here in the 85th minute. Just subbing on is Cecilia Gee for the Oakland Soul, who competed at Stanford, was a part of two of the national titles the Cardinal won in recent years. Lots of Stanford connections in addition to just Pac-12 connections out here, as we mentioned, several UCLA either commits or players who are a part of the game. Amy Ennis checks in for the Glens, as does T. Tran. Maya Bautista also comes on as a sub for San Francisco. Final five minutes plus a little bit of stoppage time. That's all that separates the Glens from moving on. We'll play next Sunday at 1230. You can catch that one on the Cron On app or Cron4.com. Again, it'll be against the winner of Holy Town FC and the California Storm. Those two will play tonight at 7 o'clock. Can the Glens get another? Frias save and handled by Armis. That's a big stop. Credit to her for continuing to battle. She's seen a lot of chances come her way today. Armas has been excellent for the Oakland Soul throughout the match. Has made the saves she could make, but San Francisco has just been creating a lot of chances and some quality finishes as well. Soul still battling, trying to break the shutout here in the final minutes. 
into the box. Geis, her shot, and a goal. And there it is to make it 5-1. Great work by the Soul. You've got to commend them for continuing to press in this game, not giving up, having a relentless mentality, getting the ball up the field, putting it into a dangerous space. And that, that is an elite finish, putting it low and away, where Dominguez had no chance of getting a hand on that one because of the elite placement on that ball. Kudos to the Oakland Soul for continuing to press and breaking through in this one. Third goal of the year for Jordan Geis out of Midi High School, the UCLA commit. Geis is a player who's been doing it all. We've seen her on both ends getting it done for the Soul. She's been involved in key defensive moments. She gets up into the attack. She's a player that just has been doing so much for this team, box to box, and then even inside the 18s. Now she's a, a good looking player, good size. We've seen the speed, as you've said, Kylan, both ends of the field, she's been effective. Came on as a sub to start the second half and she's made her presence felt. Nice ball for Frias. Good defense there by the soul. Eighty ninth minute, five one. Lens and the soul. Don't expect a ton of stoppage time. We'll get that announcement shortly. Glenn's really setting the tone in this match early on. The fourth minute goal from Nadia Gomes. And then in the ninth minute, Karina Laguerre in her first game with the Glens making it 2-0. And they've controlled it since then. Guys will come over to take this throw in for the soul. Trying to get another one past Dominguez. Teaga. Good defense from San Francisco. And that will be a, a free kick for the Oakland Soul. Samantha Tran, by the way, picked up the assist on that goal for Oakland as that rolls all the way through. Just an overall great performance by the Glens from top to bottom, a good team effort. They played strong defensively, created a lot of chances in the attack, and then ultimately were elite in their finishing, bearing the ones that were able to create. They did a good job of handling, playing into the wind here in the second half. And they've weathered the storm in terms of the soul applying more pressure and holding their line much higher. The one Glenn's, minute of stoppage time. The Lens also did a good job of just really coming out on the front foot. That's one thing that stands out about their performance in this game. Putting in two goals in under 15 minutes just really put their own stamp on this game and made it hard because the soul were trying to chase this entire match. And that's a tough position to be in. So the Glens will advance to the final eight of the USLW League Western Conference final will be on Sunday, 12.30 p.m. as the final whistle sounds. And a 5-1 victory for the Glens over the Oakland Soul. Well, Kylan, a, a pretty dominant performance and a statement victory at I don't think anyone expected this. These two teams have been so good all year. 
and especially with Oakland winning 3-1 against the Glens on Sunday for San Francisco to come out and, and make a statement like this was really impressive. This was a dominant team performance and an outstanding response from the Glens after falling to the Oakland Soul just five days ago. To come back, put two away in the first 15 minutes is just beyond impressive. The Glens came out on the front foot. They had elite connections, elite passing, created those chances, and then took advantage of them. They were efficient in the attacking third, efficient in and around the 18s, and this was a win from top to bottom for the Glens as a team and as an organization. As I mentioned, though, kudos to the Oakland Soul. They put together just an outstanding season, the inaugural season for both clubs and USLW League play. They were 10-2 and two on the season for a reason. A lot of quality, a lot of talent on this side, and hopefully they hold their heads high as they walk off the pitch today. Our postgame show presented by Liga X. Liga X is the next generation for players from youth to college to pro. You can create profiles and capture your journey in communities that can be built for clubs and fans. Learn more at LigaX.io. Well, Kylan, shortly you'll be joined by our player of the game. And we'll go ahead and step aside, take a break, and be back with that interview right after this. 5-1 uh, win for the Glens. I am a Coast Guards. So this is the part where I'm just doing interviews sitting here, right? Coach is supposed to go over. And they're supposed to get a camera set up, I think. I am their shield. And then do we need to do anything else? Like, are we doing highlights we or are we just... We are. No, just do interviews. We are. There is more to cast Where are we going? Yeah. Through the Carlsberg Foundation, almost 30% of our dividends go to science. Space exploration. Yachts. And the crops of the future. So no matter what happens, there will always be beer. So, does this make our beer taste even better? Probably. Well, the counselors at Promise, I will say, from the moment that you meet them, all the interactions are genuine, and you feel like they're really there to support you. They're here to provide you with the resources. They're here to listen to you. They're here to be everything that you need, and they want to do that. They want to be there, and that's what I love about Promise and our counselors. My name is Michaela Ballon, and I am a Promise Scholar. Welcome back, and we are joined now by the Liga X player of the game, Nadia Gomes, a hat trick and an assist. Just seconds before the first half whistle, you just whipped an absolute banger. What was going through your mind as that ball was bouncing out to you after the corner kick? Oh, it was a perfect setter. I was like, I got to take the shot like one time. And it was a perfect, it was a perfect ball by um, Ima Karina. And I was like, yeah, this is like beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful, that's for sure. Now, what was your mentality going into this matchup, knowing how much was on the line and needing to respond after a loss to the Oakland Soul just five days ago? Um, to be honest, like last night when I was sleeping, I could not sleep. Like, I had dreams about this match. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we got to come out like strong today and we got to give it our best. And we really did. I got to give it up to my teammates, too. You brought up coming out strong. Your team buried two goals just within the first 15 minutes. What were the conversations like before the whistle that allowed your team to come out with so much force? Um, we just, you know, we just show up for each other every every game. When we knew coming into this game, we would have to. Um, we talked a lot about, you know, um, just keeping it composed and, you know, play for each other. And that's what we did. And the inaugural Glens USLW League season, your team is now going to the Western Conference Finals. What does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. You know, uh, we have elite players on this team, and I think everybody deserves to be um, going you know, we're going to go all the way. <laughs> How quickly do you have to shift the focus onto Sunday and what you know is going to be a very tough competition? Uh, really quick, you know, we have to keep our heads up high. Um, you know, not let this win just 
get onto it, you know. Um, I guess I think we're just gonna we're gonna do good. I think, and um, we're gonna keep focused and yeah, we're gonna play our best. You came into this game as a top ten score in USLW league play. You get a hat trick and an assist. What has been the key for you during this absolutely fire run? Um, it, I gotta give it up to my teammates again. You know, they play like the perfect balls to me every single time. And I also know that if I get a 1v1, I just got to take the player. And I know if I get a cross in, someone will be at the end of that cross. Or if someone will cross it in for me, I know I have to like make it my effort to get to the end of that too. Well, congratulations, Nadia. Best of luck on Sunday. And it's been just a pleasure to watch you this season. Thank you. Awesome. We'll be joined by Coach Mike Sharabi in just a couple of moments. I am a Coast Guard. serve the people of the United States. I will protect them. I will save them. I am their shield. We are. We are. We are. We created Cosberg Zero Zero because even the best things can be better where our golf we be. Uh, Clean one-handed backhand is better. Balancing stuff is better. Whatever this is, is better. We created Cosberg Zero Skipping your own app is better. Parking in space is better. So, can the best our golf we be make good things better? Probably. There's more to Carlsberg than meets the eye. Through the Carlsberg Foundation, almost 30% of our dividends go to science. Space exploration. God. Welcome back, and we are joined now by Glenn's head coach, Mike Sharabi. Congratulations, coach, on the win. First question for you. Nadia Gomes buries an absolute banger just seconds before the halftime whistle. How did that change the momentum going into that break? Yeah, it was um, it was a massive goal. You know, we before every game we talk about first and last five of each half is is the the game changing moments, and that's when goals are scored. And, and, and we knew that if we could uh, get that get that late goal in the end of the half, it would kind of give us the momentum and take whatever belief from them from our opponent. Um, and so that that goal, I think, really set us up for success in the second half and got us into the locker room on a positive note. This team came out of the locker room for the opening whistle with quite a bit of force, bearing two goals in the first 15 minutes. What was the message going into kickoff that allowed your team to come up with that kind of fire? Yeah, it was really just, just we want them to be them. We want our players to be themselves uh, and enjoy playing together because this, this season is so short that we want to make sure that they uh, enjoy every moment of it. And I think that the, the, it led to a good start because they knew that they could be themselves and we're not asking them to do things that they're not used to. So I, I would say their start, that's who they are. That's who they are. Love it. Now your team also put up a strong defensive performance. You gave up three goals against the Soul just five days ago. One late one in the game today, but how do you feel like your team performed overall defensively? Uh, defensively, I thought we were we were brilliant. We really, um, yes, we had a lot of possession, but I thought we did a really good job of uh, in the moments of transition. When we did turn the ball over, we were able to get compact. We were able to, to hunt the ball and, and get, get that ball back and to stop their opportunities to transition into attack. And I think that really Really set us up for, for a, a good overall match um, being being ready for those moments of transition you've told me this is a special group of players to coach the Glens in their inaugural USLW league season are now going to the Western Conference Finals what does that mean to you um, it means everything you know we we said from the beginning we had goals um, the goal was one of the goals was to win the, the conference and the next goal is the national championship um, we, we set our sights high and we're really looking forward to the Western Conference Final and playing either um, Storm or Holy Town, and we're we're going to be ready for, for for that game. And so we're we're not satisfied with where we are. We're we're looking to the next game, and we want to bring home the national championship. As you try to quickly shift the mentality, what are these next two days going to be like in terms of preparation? 
Yeah, I think um, number one is, is recover. Um, we are going to have the opportunity to watch the, the game later tonight, so we, we can have a good idea and build a good game plan going into Sunday. Um, and I think that it's really about preparing ourselves both physically and mentally for the Western Conference Final on Sunday because it is a quick turnaround. Um, but I, I think that I think that we're going to be ready for it. Awesome. We're well, looking forward to watching that match. Congratulations, Coach. It's been so much fun watching this team all season, and we hope to see you in the national championship as well. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. We're going to bring back Ben in just a moment, but we're going to take a quick break before wrapping up. Well, the counselors at Promise, I will say, from the moment that you meet them, all the interactions are genuine, and you feel like they're really there to support you. They're here to provide you with the resources. They're here to listen to you. They're here to be everything that you need, and they want to do that. They want to be there, and that's what I love about Promise and our counselors. My name is Michaela Ballon, and I am a Promise Scholar. Five one, our final score today. The San Francisco Glens with the impressive win over the Oakland Soul in the Western Conference semifinals. We've got the final stats for you here, and it really was a match controlled from start to finish by the Glens. The five goals, and they gave up the late one, as you talked about, Kylan. But they hadn't given up a shot at halftime. It ends up being 24 to seven, 15 to 30 shots on goal. As you can really hear the wind whipping here at Skyline College, but really be beginning to finish an impressive performance today by the Glens making a statement. The stats tell the story of exactly what this game was. Ooh, as the wind is really picking up out here as, as the afternoon has gone on, but the stats certainly tell the story of what this game was. The San Francisco Glens dominated from top to bottom. They came out and really put their mark on the game immediately from kickoff. They didn't let up as the game went on. Even with the wind playing into the wind, rather, while well, the Soul had the winds at their back, they still maintained control of the second half, and that was so critical. In addition to to Coach Sharabi just mentioned the first five coming out from a half and the last five going into a half, the Glens dominated. They scored just before the halftime whistle. They scored just moments into the second half, and I think those two goals were really critical in terms of developing that momentum the Glens were able to carry on through the final 45 when they had to play into the wind. So if you look to two goals that really were the impact goals, I think coming out and get it going up too early was huge, but also scoring just before and after the halftime break was huge. So the timeliness of those goals, crucial for the Glens but I think just top to bottom, it was an entire team performance. I think that the Soul team was just a little bit outmatched, and the Glens came out and executed their game plan really well. And now the Glens advance to the Western Conference Final on Sunday. That game you can see on cron4.com and the Cron on app, 12.30 p.m. on Sunday. The Glens against the winner of tonight's game between Old Town FC and the California Storm. Well, Kylan, we won't be able to do that game. So this is perhaps our last game of the season together. I just want to say, been a lot of fun working with you. Big thanks to the Bay Area Online Sports Network crew, Ryan Makinana, uh, and uh, everybody cool. else we here. We can't even, we're tongue-tied at this point. Can't get the words out, but it's been a lot of fun. It's been awesome as well to be on the call. A pleasure to watch the Glens throughout the season, but this Glens team, far from done. I'm looking far forward to seeing done. the damage they do in the playoffs, and who, who knows? We may unite uh, for one of these matches down oh, the road, so we'll have to see, but appreciate everyone who's been hanging out with us here on our broadcast. Absolutely. That'll do it for us. Our final score again, the Glens 5 and the Oakland Soul 1.